Okay, here y'all. It's uh, Peter Perils here going live, trying to do the evening experience. And uh, we'll see what's happening. Hey. Oh, this is interesting. Wait a minute. Okay. Well, I don't know why it went off when you came on. How about now? How about now? Okay, because I can see me. You're small on it. <laughs> I have an iPhone. Hey, from the UK. It looks like folks are, are tuning in. So I'm trying to think of how to add you in. Okay. All right. Okay, I got it. years ago and he was the coolest brother just really low key it was just after 42 came out let me see go live with evening experience let me see if he's waiting for the evening experience to come on but he was a he was a very talented hey brother. okay <laughs> <laughs> All right, sir. Somehow, somehow we've got the Chadwick photo in there, but that's all right. That's cool. I'll take it. That, that, that was uh, that's it. Okay. All right, sir. So we, we are here. I may have to jump up in a second and grab my uh, charger. So we have some time here. Because my, uh... Now when it's now when it's live, can your people see too? Yeah, yeah. So when they'll know that I'm live because of the fact that I went live. Okay, cool. Hang on, two, one second. No problem, sir. For y'all that do know, the evening it's every Thursday goes down. Now I'm your boy Mac three five seven. I'm here with the one and only Peter Pyros. 
uh, incredible actor, extraordinaire. Um, and we definitely are going to be talking about his illustrious career and all the things that he has going on, all the things that he's been uh, doing for the longest time uh, out in the TV and in movies. And um, I'm here on his page. Um, we're definitely getting it rocking. Uh, I want you all to tune in uh, every week when you, hey, what's up, what's up? Yes, I'm here with Peter Pyros. Uh, we are definitely going to be talking about his illustrious career. But everybody, I will be popping back on my page once this is finished. But I'm going to need Peter to save this live. Otherwise, I won't have this as film. But I will grab it. Um, so when you get off, there's a couple of steps you got to do, Peter. But I'm going to talk about that afterwards. Okay. This is craziness. All right. <laughs> This is this is the COVID world, my friend. This is the COVID world. Yes, <laughs> we, we, we're gonna make this happen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, we got a little light on it. Okay. I'm in here. Do I have to do something to save it now or later? Later, after. Okay. okay. All righty, y'all. All right. So <laughs> once again, it's Board Mac three five seven. This is the <laughs> evening experience <laughs> radio show from 7 to 9 every Thursday, but we're going back a little bit later tonight uh, because some unforeseen circumstances, but we are here. I'm here with the one and only Peter Pyros, um, and I want to tell you uh, an incredible actor who I've seen throughout many years of doing uh, so many films and movies and stage plays, and it's an incredible, incredible uh, gentleman that we have here today. And if y'all know his face, and for all you ladies that are watching the uh, O Network, yes, girl, hello, get it. Um, Y'all be uh, definitely with the have and the have nots, work it out. All right. Um, but I go back a little further than that. I'm a little bit older. Yeah, that's why you see all these grays. Um, and I remember him uh, from watching him on The Facts of Life. I remember watching him on Night Rider uh, in their last fourth season. Um, and they facilitated to have him on for a long period of time where him and Michael, he would work on Kit. And then sometimes they were going on little adventures together. Um, so, yeah, I'm an old guy. Um, but um, You and me both. If you was watching me, I was there too. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I just wanted to, you know, just to run down a few different highlights for all the people who are here. Um, for those who are soap opera fans, um, you've seen him on Young and the Restless. Um, you've seen him. New York Undercover, you've seen him in Lethal Weapon, you've seen him uh, in Step by Step, Hang on Miss Cooper, Seinfeld, Santa Barbara, The Family Man, um, uh, The Court Martial of Jackie Robinson, uh, The New Adam 12, uh, Star Trek The Next Generation, and that's just to name a few uh, different places that you've seen him. Uh, he's been in a couple of soap operas, um, As the World Turns, uh, and everybody means, uh, remembers Dr. Benjamin Harris, uh, that he played Dr. Robert has to say um, on the show. So when I say that, I, I tell you that he's been uh, in our hearts and minds for many years on a lot of different uh, TV shows. Um, welcome to the show, and I appreciate you being here today. All right, my pleasure. Glad, glad to finally get it together. <laughs> <laughs> what, ha what started the bug for you to want to uh, get into being a thespian or to get into being into the arts itself? Um, that's, a, that's an interesting question. I, w I was uh, working many years ago um, out of high school at a company that built miniatures for movies. And it was going to be kind of a short time thing. I was studying to be a dental technician, which is what my dad did. He's retired now at a LA City College and got this job working for this company. And it was just more interesting than making teeth. And, uh, <laughs> and I was like, it, you know, it was always teeth are the same, pretty, pretty the same. My dad did well with it, but I have a cousin who's an actor, commercial actor, and does a lot of theater. And there used to be a place called American Theater Arts in Hollywood that uh, I joined through him, uh, Justin Moore. Was his, is his name. He's still acting. And, uh, and I just really enjoyed it. Just wanted to do, um, I was managing editor of this magazine called International Modeler about model building. And then I, I did uh, 
special effects marvel working for this company that did m miniatures and movies and going on these movie sets and they were before CGI they were doing miniatures and it was just an interesting exciting world every day was different and I was like I want to get in on this but I didn't necessarily want to do the model building and that's kind of how it how it started didn't do it in school high school or anything so I I, I came into the game a little bit late but been very blessed very very well, blessed you seem to be a natural at it because every adaptation that I've ever seen you in, every role that I've ever watched you on, um, you I noticed you to be um, someone who immerses himself in the role. Like you really take on the persona of the role that you're playing. Now I've seen actors who just you know they you know they know their lines, but <laughs> they're not committed. You really commit to what you're doing. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I, I, I've, uh, I think I've been blessed to have characters that I can do that to or connect with, and and uh, I'm I'm glad to hear it comes through. Like on um, Knight Rider, you played RC. Yeah, uh, the character. I loved that show. That that was a great. So when I first went in, I wanted to do action adventure stuff, and I was going to be. Believe it or not, my, my thing was not to be necessarily a great actor. I wanted to be like a black Schwarzenegger. I said, I wanted to be the king of the action movies. Oh, no. <laughs> but I couldn't get, so it's interesting. A lot of the action guys are short. Right. And I'm 6'1". And I couldn't, and, and it's usually the second, you usually like the second, because I'm the brother. The second guy, that gets I, couldn't, I couldn't knock that until Knight Rider came because Hasselhoff is 6'4". Right. So they needed somebody tall to be next to him in the frame. They didn't want somebody short or they'd have to be really for technical reasons in too big of a frame. So part of what helped me in that case was my height. But I love all that to say that was that was the best big break that I could get. I was doing smaller roles till then, but that's when it was like, okay, I can quit my day job and be an actor. So if anybody is here from my page that's supposed to be interviewed, just know that there's a lot of technical difficulties, but I will get to you, I promise. Uh, if, if my co-host is in here, please contact them and let them know. All right, um, but you uh, definitely, um, throughout the years and even now, you're still, you know, working out, you look like you're in great shape. Um, and I could have seen you doing that. I, I could have really seen you doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that uh, it was fun because uh, we are on location. So you're going to different places all over LA. They have me jumping over cars. I was riding a motorcycle. I was wow. doing, fighting ninjas with a snow shovel. I was doing all kinds. <laughs> Guys did crazy stuff, so it was it was fun. Hasselhoff was fun. He was a he was a great guy, great to work with. Edward Mulhair was somebody who I had enjoyed as a as a kid on a show called The Ghost and Mrs. Muir. So it, wow, it was, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was a it was a great experience. So with that being the case, and you being a person that um, has facilitated to do uh, so much and so many different roles. What was the most standout role to you uh, in your illustrious career? What has been the thing that you said, wow, I can't believe like I, that, that, that was me. I did that. But it's, it's interesting. Um, in, a, in an interesting way, I would say between my first big break was great and the have and have nots. The show that, that uh, I'm on now was something that it started out, um, I'm not really a big comedy person, but I wanted to work with Tyler because I always loved his, like, his dramatic movies like Daddy's Little Girls and Good Deeds and all that. I always wanted, so the opportunity came for his first, this was his first dramatic series. And I said, I got to be a part of this, Tyler Perry, Oprah Winfrey. And the part when I initially read for it, was a very small role. It was okay. like literally like five lines. It was 
He was a certified financial planner, Veronica's husband. That was the description of the character. That was, that was it. But I was like, I want to do this. I ended up getting the, the role. And when the scripts, the first scripts came, there was this whole change with him as a judge and all this kind of stuff. And I didn't audition him with the David voice when I got the role. Mm. So there, the first day of shooting, I'm watching, and it, they, they were supposed to get to me that day, but they didn't. And they, they were like, oh, wow. I was like, this guy's supposed to be a judge. And I didn't know who I was opposite with. I'm supposed to be older than uh, the Jim Cryer character, John Schneider. So I had to change up my energy, like on the spot that night. And I gave him that the deeper voice, the David voice. And right. Slowed down and did everything to create this persona, this David. Had to be more serious because he's a judge now. And so I, this thing came up. Next day went in, tried it. Tyler's like, great, let's go. And I was like, oh my God, I gotta, I gotta do this every, <laughs> every time. <laughs> I gotta find this guy and be in this thing. So from, from what it started when I was auditioning and got the role to what it is now, nobody at the time, they were like, my, my representation at the time discouraged me because they were like, the network isn't doing well. It's not really gonna last. You're taking yourself out of pilot what? season. And, and that it has become this huge phenomenon to our seventh season now. It's, it's been the best working environment that I've ever been in. Everybody, everybody gets along. The people at the studio, the cast, the crew, working with Tyler's great. He's got an amazing facility now with this new studio, Fort McPherson. It's like over 200, it's the largest if not the definitely the US, maybe even the largest studio in the world. Owned by his brother.